my scholarly interest now is really in terms of the public perception and that intersection between science and society. I'm not wearing my, my ASPSU hat, but I'm a member of the Student Senate. Oregon's ballot measure 92 is the most expensive political battle ever waged in this state. It may also be one of the most complex in terms of its broader implications about the future of food, as well as the level of familiarity with agricultural science that it demands of voters. Despite these complexities, discussion about the issue has been polarized and contentious. So contentious is the topic of GMOs, in fact, that one of the people I interviewed didn't want to use her last name for her safety and that of her children. Sarah used to work for Monsanto. I'm Sarah. Um, I have a blog called It's Mom Sense, um, which is aimed at parents to try and help them cut through some of the misinformation around food. I'm a mom. I have two little ones, six and four. Um, I grew up in St. Louis. I did used to work for Monsanto in the public affairs department. So I worked there um, kind of as a liaison between scientists and the media. I am pretty sensitive to the fact that I did used to work for Monsanto. I think that it's unfair that a lot of people think that because I work there, um, everything that I say is tainted or that I might have been brainwashed by Monsanto or that I believe the things that I believe because I work for Monsanto. And it's actually the opposite. I worked for Monsanto because I already felt passionately about food and about egg and about, you know, GMOs. The scientists that I met at working for Monsanto um, were dedicated to the cause. They've always been dedicated to coming up with solutions for farmers and to help, you know, feed these people are super passionate about doing the work, about the biotechnology, about the science, about really helping people. And I think that's something that's often misunderstood about Monsanto is that, you know, they're not evil. They're not evil scientists. You know, they're not trying to take over the world. They're not trying to poison you. So I think it's very interesting that we've seen waves and waves of, um, you know, public demand for labeling and desire for labeling. And then when it comes to votes, it's always the same strategy. Initially, there's high uh, public support, and then within the you know few weeks of the vote, uh, the opposition comes in and has the same kind of messages. It's about cost. Measure 27 in 2002, 12 years ago, we had a similar ballot measure, and if you look at the ads, it's basically uh, same strategy. The fashions have changed, but you, know, you have a female family farmer talking about uh, the, that impact, and then you have this the cost of food issue that's going to increase the cost of food. So I don't really think those are the real issues, but of course those are things that uh, speak to people and, and shift votes. I, I, I stumbled upon uh, the, the GMO Skepta Forum, on a group on Facebook, and was reading the stuff they were posting, and there was a lot of, you know, critical um, dissection of you know anything that's ten at least tangentially related to the whole issue mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, I was starting to learn some things and, and becoming aware of things <laughs> and it was starting to become um, like it was it was hard to justify being against GMOs mm -hmm. you know the more I read Read more about this issue at the Portland State Vanguard online. I'm Joseph Thebus. Thanks for watching.